Hi, I'm Bert Hoffman. I'm a longtime member of the Rotary Club of Novato and uh, also been a participant in the Novaro board for a number of years, off and on for probably 25 years. I've done a number of stints, a couple of terms as president of Novaro, and Novaro has always been special to me. I've enjoyed working with the people on the boards. I've enjoyed working with Bob Caro, who's the property manager. And I've enjoyed learning and meeting some of the tenants who we've helped in their lives here at Nova Row. Hi, we're here today at Nova Row 3. I'm with John Stuber and Paul Scheller. And we're going to talk about the origin of Nova Row. When I was originally on the board many years ago, I really wanted to understand what was Novaro all about? So I could make decisions that were appropriate to the spirit of Novaro, and I'd have a better understanding what they were thinking about when they originally created Novaro. So with that being said, John, can you take us back and walk us through the origin of Novaro and tell us what were you guys thinking about at the beginning? How this all started. Okay, the, the, the idea of Novaro itself was the genesis of a, uh, a meeting in Sonoma County, Sonoma State University, actually. It was uh, 19, I believe 1972, when we had a district conference up there. Ruben and I went up together. He was incoming president, and I was the incoming chairman of community development. And we, uh, after listening to the presentations in both of our particular areas of interest, we, we were sitting down having a cup of coffee afterward and uh, started talking about the challenges of below market rate housing. I think it was called BMR at the time. And we um, came to the conclusion that a lot of the, almost 100% of the activity in that field was based on government assistance, federal government assistance. And the process was pretty complicated, time consuming and expensive. <clears throat> we asked each other, why do we send a dollar to Washington DC get back 50 cents that we can use for actual construction. And why couldn't we do it locally? Why not use Novato dollars for Novato people and make it a Novato project? We could be, we had all the necessary ingredients in our Rotary Club in the way of members to do everything that was being done at the federal level but it was a lot less expensive and we, there was obviously a, a need for it. There were people, this was before Prop 13, you have to understand. Taxes were rising on a pretty good spiral and people were retiring and not able to remain in the community because of costs. So where could, where could they live? Where, what kind of a place could we determine that, or could we provide that would be suitable and, a, and at an affordable cost? So that was the, uh, the beginning of the, the thinking. We uh, <clears throat> came back to the club, and between Ruben and myself, we contacted every single member of the club to be sure that it was something that they would be amenable to. There were, I believe, about 60 members at the time. And to, to a person, they all agreed that it was something they could support before, we knew this before we brought it to the club for approval. Every, every single member of the club signed up to be a participant. And we knew this before we began. Then we needed, of course, to find a piece of property. 
which we did, which was distressed because of the zoning. We talked to the city, got the city to accept a rezoning that would accommodate a senior facility. Every member of the club was as was a participant. Every every single one. I'm here with Paul Kaler, son of Rube Kaler, one of the founders of Nova Row. Take us back to Tell us a little bit about Rube when you were growing up or when he was originally involved in Nova Row and Rotary. Sure, I'd love to. Um, he, was, he was a great man and I was very fortunate to be his son and have him as a father. Um, he was a very attentive family man. Um, the roots of, of, of the thought process in developing Nova Row, uh, which we're speaking of specifically today, um, go back to his uh, youth in Minnesota. He grew up in a small town, uh, Walnut Grove, outside Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. His father w had a hardware store there, and so he would get up every morning about four or five o'clock and, uh, and warm up the, the house so that his father could get up and, and go get the chickens. Mm -hmm. The reason I bring that up is, is back in Minnesota, they would uh, have what was called a barn raising. Mm -hmm. And so it, the community would get together when one of the farmers wanted to uh, uh, put up a barn and they'd have a Saturday party and literally raise the barn. Um, this was, this, they would then share with each other, you know, the labor, the, the food, it'd become a big party. Uh, his second endeavor into a community project was uh, Grace Lutheran Church in Novato. And so he took the barn racing approach uh, to weekend labor uh, from the congregation to construct the, uh, the church. Hmm. So they literally built the church on uh, borrowed labor. And then uh, the second project was the parish in, of Grace Lutheran Church. And they did the same type of thing. Uh, later on, probably 15, 20 years later, he uh, did the Boys Club of Novato, the same yeah. way, uh, putting together uh, labor from his, his construction crew, of which I was a part. Uh, we would volunteer and work on Saturdays, and, and just from the community, and they built an entire uh, gymnasium and, and the entire Boys Club once yeah. again with, with, with labor. So this perpetuated into the concept of Nova Row, one of his, his greatest talents which was rallying the crews. Uh, it's very hard yeah. to get people to work out uh, on weekends and spare time on their own. And uh, as I say, his, his ability to get the volunteers to show up yeah. was, was probably the cause of the success or you know, one of the basic reasons the project was so successful. Yeah. All right, so well, we talked a lot about uh, what Ruben did for work and all. What did Ruben do for fun? Uh, that, that, that pretty much socially, that with rotary, uh, golf, um, and, and flying, mm -hmm. that kept him pretty busy. Oh, I'll bet. Yeah. That and raising a nice family and, you know, building a great community around him. Well, thank you for your time coming sure. to, to meet with us, Paul, and tell us a little bit more about your father. Yeah, I'm really proud of him and uh, do anything for him to today. Yeah. One of the things you touched on was how you got Nova Row going. And of course, it took capital. So how much did you guys really have to borrow? It's kind of hard to understand in today's terms. Was it 100000 or 500000 or what did it really take to get Nova Row going? Pretty close. It was two fifty to 300000 $200,000, that's yes. what the same yeah. money took. It was, I think, close to $300,000. Yeah. From the bank, yeah. But Ruben backed up a lot of that, too. Yeah. You were building a lot of things around town, so you had a lot of experience in that area. What did it take to get Nova Rose started? Ruben and I had, had worked on some other below market rate, as I mentioned before, so we were pretty well familiar with all the process <clears throat> necessary for federal participation. And that's really what caused us to try to avoid that. We thought we could do it a lot better, a lot less expense, and a better product. 
Wayne was on the council, I'm sure, and uh, I know he was the first mayor of Novato. Uh, he, I'm sure, was helpful in getting this thing going from a political side and from the side of the city. What other people were helpful to get this thing going in that regard? Once we were convinced that uh, the club would support the project, we had to find the property. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the, the site for Nova Row 1, it was distressed because of the zoning. Mm -hmm. As I mentioned, we went to the city, got the zoning change, and uh, Wayne Womack, as I recall, was very instrumental in getting the property signed over to the uh, Rotary Club because the owners couldn't couldn't move. It was it was uh, trapped in the zoning code. Yeah. Alan Dunham was a project architect. We actually had participation from the sanitary district and the water district personnel. They participated in some of the construction on a voluntary basis. Obviously. A real community effort then. Yeah. One of the clubs gave us a piano for the, but every member of the club participated in unit one, certainly, most in unit two and three. You know, I, I, Alan Dunham was instrumental too in, in all these projects. We're here today with Alan Dunham, talk a little bit more about the creation of Nova Row. Alan, how'd you feel about uh, Nova Row and when you first got involved? Tell us a little, take us back to that time when this began. New in town and I uh, got involved in some of the civic uh, activities and, and uh, of course those include Rotarians and I met uh, uh, I think John Stuber, and uh, he was talking about this, and somehow uh, I said, oh, "It sounds sounds interesting. Is there any way I can help?" And and one thing led to another, and I was selected to be the architect, and had never done a senior housing before, and so uh, they told me about how they had uh, wanted to provide housing for the uh, elderly. Uh, Basically, the women in uh, in, in Nevada that that uh, uh, wanted to stay, but be, for various reasons uh, could not uh, financial and so forth. So, um, so I thought, what a nice what a nice idea! And they had been working on the uh, acquiring a piece of property, had a had a. a a situation where they could keep the land until they had it, a use for it. Um, so, uh, so I started looking at at the various senior housing projects around the county and talking to various people, and discovered that yes, the majority of the people would be would be uh, uh, females. It would have widow single and uh, and then uh, the um, uh, studying more about uh, the needs of seniors and at that time I think I was in my mid 30s so it wasn't really an active uh, you know my environment was not surrounded by people who were retired so. So I used a lot of resources. Uh, Martin Mackey was uh, in charge of the Ecumenical Housing Association, and they had built a couple of senior homes in Marin County, and so I used him as a resource. A few of the things that came out was that, number one, there would be mainly women. Number two, the single. It wasn't restricted to singles, but that was the, that was the need. Uh, the other thing was a, a little bit about the seniors living, and uh, um, one of them was that, uh, uh, first of all, these, these had to be independent living. They, they, it wasn't a care facility because, and then later on we discovered that we can do anything you can do in a hotel, but you can't do in a hospital. So, I mean, you... 
And the other thing was that um, we uh, we wanted we wanted to encourage it to be like a community, and uh, that that worked out in a number of ways. And and and, and so we we built the a community center had mail. This is kind of on the same model here. The mail, uh, the laundry, a little kitchen, uh, a place for activities that could be. Uh, changed according to however the uh, uh, community wanted to use it for parties. And so we came up with that. This was all done on a volunteer basis? Or? Well, it's purely voluntary. Mm -hmm. uh, Any time you saw somebody out at unit one with a jackhammer, there was a Rotarian on the other end. Mm -hmm. And it was... Uh, it was every day something was being done. Weekends were always big, a lot of work on weekends. So how did you keep all these volunteers organized and keep them on track to build something as complicated as an apartment complex? I would like to, I'd like to start out that what they did, the Rotarians at that time, for this was an over 02 we're talking about now, but I know most about it, John knows more about one than I, than I do. But in over 02, what we did in the mid 83 to late 83, every Rotarian in a club, we had, during that period of time, we had 108 Rotarians at that time. And, um, but every member in a club sent, signed a, a pledge seat, how many hours they're going to pledge. And every, I'd call these, every week I'd, I'd make actually hundreds of phone calls and you couldn't put me off very long because I said, well, what day can you make it this week? And they would say, well, no, I can't make it this week. I says, fine, what about next week? All right. so. Hey, so then you have these guys showing up week after week, and you had to be a persuasive taskmaster to keep them all on path. There was a lot, a lot of phone calls, and, but they, every, everyone, uh, as John mentioned, for one, uh, for two, uh, all the Rotarians participated. And of course, a few of them can't do too much. But in Nova Road 2, what we, had, what we did, we did om almost all the work outside and we ended up doing a lot of hand work, and that was hard, hard ground. Uh, the buildings were going up, but we had to do the leveling air for the uh -huh. concrete and all that. And we did all the painting, on, on, on all the painting in the over row two, which is a lot of painting. Uh, we had really probably a couple thousand hours of Rotarian time, which uh, I think is worth maybe 1,500 hours, 2,000, we're not exact. I never added it up. I've got it all down with, with each Rotarian put in, how many hours. But uh, it was worth probably $150,000, $200,000 oh, yeah. uh, savings in, mm -hmm. in, in building it. Yeah. Yes, I, I would like to say that, uh, and he's got to be mentioned, is Lee Gurner. Lee Gurner did all the landscaping at Nova Row 2. And what is there today is almost all Lee Gurner stuff. Mm -hmm. And he did it physically, he designed it and did it physically himself. Mm -hmm. uh, just an amazing man. I would like to add one thing about Nova Row 2. That property was donated to the Rotary Club by uh, a local contractor. Mm -hmm. Dick Fedrick, Dick and Shirley Fedrick. Yeah. So we, the property was available at no cost to the club. There was some contribution, some monetary contribution by the Marin Community Foundation. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the amount, yeah. but it, it helped get us through the uh, construction period. Uh-huh. As a grant? As a grant. We didn't have any grants on Unit 1, and I'm not sure about all the grants that were associated with Unit 3, where we yeah, are now. Some, yeah, there were significant grants that involved in Nova Row 3. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk to Bob Carroll about that. Yeah. Nova Row's rents 
are so reasonable that you'd have to go 300 miles from here to find something priced like we are able to price them. Mm -hmm. And the only exception would be some form of uh, a senior complex sponsored by HUD where they have to qualify every year and it's based strictly on their income. What we've been able to do is keep our rents artificially low. Mm -hmm. When I first joined Novaro, as you know, the saying was we're going to keep the rents equal to about 75% of what they are in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Well, the marketplace has gone crazy out there. I mean, a one-bedroom apartment, 16, 17, 18, 1900 dollars. Granted, they may be a little bit bigger and have an amenity or two um, that is uh, newer, but I mean, they can't even remotely compare with Novaro as far as cost. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> and that's great because. So many of our tenants are the people who, for whatever reason, kind of fell through the cracks financially. They, they lived their whole life. They raised their families. Most of them, uh, there aren't that many couples. Uh, most of them are ladies. And their, their incomes are not large incomes. Mm -hmm. And our rents are, they're heaven on earth for them. Because without them, they become what they don't want to become, and that's a burden on their family. And let me assure you, I know 126 tenants because we're 100 percent full, and the last thing any of them want to be is a burden on their children. They just don't want it. They want their independence, but they have to be able to afford their independence, and Novro allows them to afford it. So let's. As you know, that's one of the things that I, I strive for all the time is to keep the rents low. Well, and you talk about <clears throat> that. It brings up again the clientele of, of Nova Row. Um, my perception when we were, when I had been involved in this conversation on the board, as you get into government terms, et cetera, you have the ultra low and you have low income and then you have moderate, et cetera. Um, Nova Row has a target audience, if you want to call it, that that is serving the low, not the ultra low. There's all kinds of other programs right. out there right. that government sponsored mostly to serve the ultra low. Do you see that as fitting in place here? Well, let me answer that question in this way. If you spoke, <clears throat> if you spoke with my my mentor, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> now would be Paul Schiller, John Stuber, Wayne Momax, Gone. There are a couple others. The guys that were here from day one, uh, they didn't want any government affiliations. So I come along in, in 2000, and one of the people that helped me put all this together um, says, you know, we can get some, some federal funding and there are not many strings attached to it. I said, well, tell me more about this. It's called CDBG funds. I'm not going to go into that, but um, I, I said, you know, I'm trying to build this place as inexpensively as I can out of pocket with as less debt. I got money from Marine Community Foundation. Let's see if I can get some CDBG funds. And their handle was I had to have 20% of the, of the complex at the very low. I took a substantial amount of funds from them. Mm -hmm. And there are no strings attached. They come out and make sure that 20%, which is 20% of 48 units, are at the very low. Well, when they come out here, I can show, you can look at all 40 of them because all 40 of our tenants are at the very low. So how many units did you create at Nova 1 and then Nova Road 2? We know, of course, that Nova Road 3 was 40 units. Yes, Nova Road 1 was 30 units. 30, right. Number 2 was 56 units, three mm -hmm. buildings. Yeah. And um, I'd like to also, it was very important in number 2, Fred Rugg did almost all the hustling up the, the financing that we got for it and everything else. Uh, some Similar to what Bob did, except 
Bob in Nova Row 3, it, that was one of the toughest things I ever saw, what Bob had to go through for the financing, which turned out to be super financing, very, very difficult, uh, what he had to do. And I'm sure you had to have uh, approvals from those other significant people in your life. Edna had to uh, sign off on this, I'm sure. And uh, later, Rena, I know she was very helpful in the time, and she later became a Rotarian when women were involved in Rotary. And Pauline, I'm sure, was instrumental in your involvement. John? Ab absolutely. Edna did a tremendous job. Uh, she would like to, on uh, all our work parties, on, on the weekends, we'd always have food, and she was uh, very, <laughs> very good at getting us food and good food. So, uh, which made, and, and, and these work parties, uh, <clears throat> they were really a party. I mean, we had a lot of fun. Everybody raised hell, and, and you could take a break, you could do whatever the heck you wanted to do, but it's amazing uh, the, the people that got blisters over it. <laughs> <laughs> it, must, it must have brought the club closer together to have this going on in Rotary. Very, very positive for all the members. And actually, I, you know, as I, I don't do much in Rotary today other than give them a few bucks here and there. But um, other than that, I, I, the, I'm real proud of the club as it is today. And I think a lot of that... Uh, has been in Nevada Rotary from the day one Clark Palmer. Novaro was originally created as a product of Rotary, but over the years it's become a lot more self-sufficient. How do you see Novaro changing or evolving going on into the future? Well, Novaro is, as you are aware, is a separate corporation and a I think the uh, the original bylaws set it up such that it's it's been successful in its own right. It uh, has kept pace with with time. We've made improvements, to, especially in Nova Row One, over the years that have been to the benefit of the occupants. It is strictly a volunteer basis, as you mentioned. For some reason or another, that seems to be a very desirable component. Everybody tries hard, and uh, it's, it's just been outstandingly successful. Okay. We're very grateful to the Nova, Nova Row Corporation. <laughs> As I personally knew, and quite a few people originally that moved in, Novato, Novato people, yeah. and these were people that worked hard all their life, but didn't make a lot of money. And they lived in houses that were, were being priced out of. And it was so gratifying to see these people get nice housing and that they could afford. Yeah. And it, it's the same today. And uh, actually, probably uh, the way things are going, probably have to build a lot more of them. I, I, I don't think I'll ever get over this um, attitude. This, I just, I, I love every minute I'm here. And I, and I thank the Lord. I said, thank you, dear Jesus, for this day. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. And I, it really, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I'm here.